National Anthem done, and we are ready for some lacrosse on a rainy afternoon at Rafferty Stadium in Fairfield, Connecticut. We welcome here, you here to Fairfield, Connecticut. Our CAA Game of the Week here on Lacrosse TV features the 2-0 Drexel Dragons here in conference play, taking on the 1-1 Fairfield Stags. With that, we welcome you, Travis Eldridge, alongside the gold medalist with Team USA, Marcus Holman. Marcus, this is an important game for both these teams here early on in conference play. Drexel looking to get to 3-0 in conference for the first time since 2013. Yep. Happy uh, April Fool's Day, everyone. This is going to be uh, no joke of a game. We're excited for some more conference play in one of the toughest leagues in the country. Obviously, Fairfield trying to defend home turf here today, and Drexel looking to continue a three-game winning streak. I don't want to know how long you were working on that opening line <laughs> for today. Let's get, meet some of our players to watch here today. We'll start on the Fairfield side of things. They've got a big, dynamic sophomore attackman in Jack McKenna, who leads the way for this attack unit. Jack McKenna is one of the bright young stars in Division I lacrosse. He's played in 23 games, Travis. He has a goal in every single game, and he has at least two goals in 21 out of those 23 games. So this kid knows how to find the back of the net. He's massive, 6'6", 240, and moves well and can finish the ball with the best of them. Maybe not quite as big on the other side for Drexel, but the quarterback of the Dragons attack unit, Sean Donnelly, the junior out of Bradenton, Florida. Yeah, product of the IMG Academy down in Florida. Donnelly has had a pretty balanced career. He's amassed at least 20 assists in his first two seasons. This year, he's doing a little bit more of goal scoring. He has 21 goals coming into the contest today and is a really nice finisher with different releases around the goal. Donnelly here on a hot streak as of late, three plus points in each of his last three games, including a hat trick here last week. And we are underway from Fairfield, Connecticut. The opening draw, a battle for it here around midfield. And it's the Dragons in the Navy blue uniforms that win the draw, but a big hit, and it comes loose here to Fairfield. Matt Rice, the short stick D midi, picking up the ground ball after that big hit, and it'll be the Stags offense that goes to work for the first time here today. Yep, Coach Baxter mentioned the importance of, of facing off. Coming into the season, Fairfield's hovering around 47%. Right, you want to be over 50% as a team to kind of give yourself an even chance of, of scoring. And we'll see how Fairfield settles in on their first offensive possession here. A little sloppy. And this is something that Andrew Baxter was a bit worried about coming into this game. The team hasn't been sharp, but it's a team that can score with the best of them. No doubt. They'll dodge from these high wings. Be ready for McKenna to kind of get the ball off of movement. Uh, Bryce Ford is also another... Spectacular flyer, player for Fairfield. This is Rob Moore who moves it along. Still 25 seconds left to operate on his first possession. Here's the freshman, Will Consoli, out of the midfield. He sends it behind the cage. Good movement inside and a flash and a score. Just like that, the Stags strike first. It's one to nothing Fairfield and some slick ball movement. And guess who on the finish? <laughs> Jack McKenna. Uh, obviously moving super well inside on the crease and how could you miss him right if you're a feeder um i think that was rob moore on the assist number 50 um or maybe that was ford behind the cage but either way a really nice pass to uh, mckenna inside sorry paparazzo paparazzi on the finish on the yeah feed. max mac paparazzi the senior from new jersey picks up the helper on the mckenna assist or on no, the mckenna goal and this is something that we joked with both coaches about when we talked to him earlier this week, but is a very real possibility. These two teams played a high-scoring affair last year. 19-18, Drexel got the win. So we may see a whole bunch of goals today. Travis, you know me. I'm always down for fireworks. I'm down for goals being scored left and right. So we'll see what we get. Strong defensive play there as Jack Mulcahy has it stripped and Fairfield a chance to go in transition. Oh, good luck. He had him wide open. Matt Rice just took his eye off of it. Nice hustle by Papa Rosi to keep the possession here for Fairfield. Papa Rosi all over the stat sheet so far. What a great last name, too. 
The flashing lights of the paparazzi, not too bright for him. <laughs> Let's meet this Fairfield starting unit. We mentioned Paparozzi and McKenna. They're two of the starting attackmen. They're joined by Bryce Ford, another veteran member, Redshirt Jr. Gilbert here, part of the midfield, along with Will Consoli and Rob Moore. Here is Consoli, the freshman. Jump shot and... Stick got lodged in there, forcing it high. Backup is there for the Stags. Yep, nice defensive positioning there. Just, I know it's simple, but defenders, just play with your stick out, and you can cause havoc for offensive players. Awesome take by Bryce Ford. Jump shot and a score, and the Stags have it going early. 2-0 Fairfield. Yeah, Ford comes into this game as Fairfield's leading point Score with 21 goals and 13 assists. Shooting about 35%. Him and McKenna are, are shooting the ball super, super well and very efficiently. As you can see already, they each have one shot and they each have one goal. Ford coming off a, another good performance with three goals in the loss to Towson last week. Is this... Draw comes all the way back into the quarter for Drexel. Colin Gukwa trying to tight walk the sideline. He does as he flips it away. They only have four seconds to get this over midfield. Drexel does. They finally do. And they'll try to get what will be their first real offensive set. Zach or Sean Curcio in there as part of the starting at midfield unit along with Jack Mulcahy, the reigning CAA Player of the Year, number five in Navy Blue for Drexel. Yeah, Mulcahy's a great initiator, very balanced player, great vision. Kind of the quarterback of the midfield for Drexel. This is Luke Tomac, the sophomore, and he gets the Dragons on the board. Guy who missed last year due to injury after a really good freshman season, and he's got his 13th goal of the year. Just pretty simple offense here from Drexel, kind of running like a, a three-man weave up top. And then you can see the technique at the end here. Tomek with a little hitch, gets to the middle of the field. As an offensive player, you're trying to shoot from that middle of the field area. It gives you more angle to shoot at that cage and a nice finish for Drexel. Luke Tomac from New Haven, Connecticut. So this is kind of a homecoming for him. Having a chance to play... Not too far down the road here in Fairfield. Yeah, oh, Fairfield, a... this venue is was actually home to a PLL event last season. We're coming back here this summer. We had a great crowd, one of the best crowds of the summer. Obviously, you're kind of smack dab in the middle of the East Coast. People from Boston, the New England area can get down, and people from Maryland can drive up as well. Rafferty Stadium, one of the, really one of the great, lacrosse venues uh, I, I think in the northeast it is such a cool place to watch a game unfortunately didn't get great weather here today but you get good weather and you, the students out there on the hill they come down you got the student housing across the way they'll watch from up there it's it's an awesome environment when when you get everything right yeah another possession here for fairfield That shot just wide of Ross Blumenthal, the starting goalie here for Drexel. It was Dean Ford, the short stick D midi. Guy who is banged up a bit throughout the beginning part of this season, but seems to be, at least according to Coach Baxter, about 100% healthy for the first time this year coming into this week. Yep, and you saw him there go from D to offense, you know, invert his guy behind the cage. So, you know, they're allowing him to, to play some offense, and he's a threat to score. Pass back outside by Paparozzi. Getting a stick in there was Gukwa, and he forces the turnover. Gukwa, the, the newcomer to this starting close defensive unit for the Dragons. Patrick Udovich and Brendan Greenwald, both grad students. And then you got Gukwa, the sophomore, smack dab in the middle of the two. Yep, and, and the Drexel defense settling in. Obviously, they're led by assistant coach Tucker Durkin, who's been a world team member and, and one of the best, you know, professional defensemen of, of all time. And, uh, you know, he's certainly going to bring out some toughness and some hard checks from that unit. Yeah, it would, it's a big surprise if a 
defensive unit led by Tucker Durkin is not a strong one. How about that for a strong shot? Max Semple. Seeing the sparks fly the water off the net. He's got his first of the day, 16th of the year. and We're tied at two. All right, you want to hear the official stat line of a Canadian lacrosse player? 16 goals and one assist. <laughs> That's Max Semple right there on the lefty wing. Just making it look easy, but guys, finishers around the cage like that are just able to find space. And then I love that quick release, right? It's, it's catch, the ball's in and out of his stick. And he's able to put that near side. And you love the water kind of splashing off the goals today. Those makes for some good visuals. Simple from the West Coast out in Canada, British Columbia, out in Coquitlam. Produced a number of great players, including a, another former Drexel Dragon and Reed Bowering. So the Dragons pick this one up off the faceoff win. Connor McVicker helps get another possession for the Dragons. So starting to... Get some more opportunities here after Fairfield dominated, dominated the offensive possession for the first four or five minutes. Yep. You mentioned kind of the, the Canadian pipeline there. Drexel's had a, a multitude of uh, Canadians come in and be successful as we they see another just, goal. Yeah, they're not stopping here. That was the freshman Connor Hooley. He's from Minnesota, not quite as far north as Canada, but they all count the same, and the Dragons have their first lead of the day. Similar accents. <laughs> um, in that part of, of the country. But a great take from Hooley just coming out of the box, gets matched up, matched up on a short stick. And I love the pace of that dodge, just attacking that pipe. He's able to put the stick back in his strong hand for a little bit more angle. And we're running and gunning here, Travis. We're off to a hot start, both ends. He's got five combined goals less than halfway through this opening quarter, just about what we expected. Dragons have scored three in a row after Fairfield led two to nothing. And these face-off guys are going to get a workout today. <laughs> we actually send Tim Lucky out there to take this face-off for Fairfield. Going to rotate through a couple of guys here. It's been Smith who's taken the first five. And it goes to the Dragons once again. So momentum building for Drexel. Yeah, kind of able to, to play make it, take it here. As an offensive player, this is what you love. Early in the game, you're able to win some face-offs. Um, and it looks like Fairfield's man down. I'm not sure yeah. what, what the call was. We had a penalty actually on the face-off man, Dylan Smith, for a cross-check. So... That's why we didn't see Smith out there to take the face off. Explains a lot. But man down, Fairfield gets the ball down on the ground, a chance to pick up the loose ball. It's exactly what they do. It's Matt Rice again. He's been all over the field here so far this year, so far here today. Yep. And bringing it across is Braden Lynch. Look out, Braden Lynch winds and fires. He shoots wide. Daniel Wilson down on the other end for Fair Fairfield, their defenseman throwing some lumber down there with the ball on the ground. Nice job by him making his presence felt. Fairfield with a big stop and a clear. Probably going to kill off this penalty and then look to attack. And it appears we are back to even strength. So Fairfield able to go back on the attack and that one slides in. I mean, just about everything falling for both these teams to start. We're knotted up at three. Yep, just one combined save here in the early going. And it looks like this was McKenna again here. Actually, this got deflected into the goal. Wow. It never got to McKenna. Yeah. I, I think well, you well, have to give credit to that. They do give the goal to McKenna, but I think it was actually just Moore who yeah. had it deflected off a Drexel player. It was Moore on the pass. And then we will not name the Drexel defenseman, actually, because we didn't really see it on the replay. <laughs> but I'm sure that'll be, uh, that'll be a tough one to, to watch and film. Man, just game. unlucky. Yeah. And, you know, that's one of those you can't even blame the goalie. And you're you're thinking yeah. this one's going to the back post. You're trying to recover, and it just deflects on by you. And I'm actually surprised that I feel like in lacrosse, those 
don't happen as often as maybe they could. Obviously, you see it in hockey a lot with guys just kind of throwing shots to the goal and, and guys really being deflectors. But I think that was more of an old school type of lacrosse where guys used to screen the goalie. Not as much anymore. He had one that rung off the bar and it reset the shot clock here to 60 for Fairfield. This is Jake Gilbert trying to get the hand free. Moves it along. Consoli stepped down high. I like the way Fairfield's moving on offense right now. They're attacking the wings, right? Kind of a new age style of offense. This pairs look, attacking from the wings. So guys have their sticks to the middle of the field instead of, you know, an old school down the alley type of offense. So we'll see if they can keep it going here and, and sharing the rock, getting good looks on cage. Sends it behind. This is McKenna going to work for Max. Jump shot on that question mark, and Blumenthal finally comes up with a stop. Just kept it out. Blumenthal on the board with his first save. That's a big one, especially at the end of the shot clock. Right, Those goals can be such momentum breakers for defense defenses, right? If you grind that whole time and then allow a goal with 80 seconds left on that shot clock. So big one for Blumenthal. Semple gets out of the double team, and then Consoli puts a stick on the deck. And now we will get a whistle. Do we have a flag down there, too? Hearing a lot of commotion from the fans, that makes me think we, we might have a penalty here. I feel like Drexel might be man up. We'll have to wait and see what this call is. It's a one-minute slash on Jack McKenna. So once again, Fairfield man down. Right. Mulcahy is the feeder, number five. We got Semple as a finisher. Donnelly as a shooter. Jump shot from Donnelly. Slipped out of his stick. Back up there for the Dragons. They keep it. Still plenty of time on this extra man. Nine man up goals this year for the Dragons. Coming in 36% on the man up for the season. Donnelly at the top. Nice pass inside. Shot wide of the freshman goalie, Will Snyder. Nice collapse there by the Fairfield defense on that crease look. Donnelly. This is Curcio here on the near side. He's got Augustine and a save by Snyder. So much like we saw Blumenthal at the other side. Big one for the freshman goalie here for Fairfield to come up with a stop. Yep, and two man down stops now for Fairfield. Right, man down's tough. You're probably going to give up a shot, but you want to give up a shot that your goalie's comfortable with. And there it was contested, and it ended up just going right into the back of Snyder's stick. So stick side high. He'll take those any day of the week. He's got a loose ball as we're back to even strength. Good hustle by Fairfield to keep it alive. All right, calm down. Sub your guys on. Play some offense here. Nice job keeping the possession alive. In a slightly less calmer tone, I have a feeling that's what Andrew Baxter is saying on the <laughs> sideline at the moment. Yeah, you probably could hear a nice yellow, <laughs> yellow, yellow call from the sideline. So game tied up at three, just under four minutes to go in this opening quarter. Gilbert takes it all the way back behind the cage. Gilbert sends it back into the middle. Good collapse by the Drexel defense, and they come up with the takeaway. Patrick Yudovich comes out with it. Really nice defense there from Drexel on that two slide, right? That helped to McKenna. Good look in transition, but getting stopped there by Snyder is short, short stick team in. Fairfield will once again slow it down. Yep, and then here goes Ford again on this invert. One of those guys that 
Andrew Baxter said we may see play a little bit more two ways. A short stick D midi typically, but a guy that they don't mind having play some offense. Nice move out top, bouncer wide. I like the way Gilbert's moving right now. He's getting the short stick a lot. Just good footwork. He's creating separation on the initial dodges and then there with a really good move, not able to hit the cage. By the way, in case you're wondering, Bryce and Dean Ford are indeed brothers. Not only that, they're twins both out there on the field. I wasn't going to say anything, but I, I assumed that. But you never want to assume anything on the broadcast. So thank you, Travis. That was Ford to Ford on the little hockey pass. Now oh, it's Bryce who kicks it back outside. Moore trying to get through. Has the stick check just at the last second. Good defensive play. Nine seconds left on the shot clock. You want to be smart here. I would throw the ball up to the wing to feed inside, or you're going to take this to the rack, maybe crease dive. Bryce Ford. Four seconds. And he finds the back of the net with a bouncer. With one second on the shot clock, Ford makes it four to three. No crease dive necessary for Bryce Ford. He's just going right up the hash. Very similar to the first goal that he scored. Watch this bounce away here from pressure, that little hesitation. And then he snaps this one high to low. His first goal was over the left shoulder of Blumenthal. This one he yanks back down. Bryce Ford showing off some nice skills coming up that right hash. And you know what? I mean, we, we talked about it last week here, Marcus. That's a smart shot because even if you miss, that thing's going back toward the, the end line. So you're not putting Drexel in a position where they can get going and transition the other way with a low shot clock situation. Yep, there's definitely subtleties to that end of shot clock game plan, right? And even Bryce Ford, his body himself is going upfield. So even if that was a, a clean save, right, his, his trajectory is taking him up towards the midline where he can also prevent transition as well. So those are, again, those are those momentum goals that you love as an offensive coach, but as a defensive coach, right? Coach Durkin, I'm sure, is like, you know, gosh dang, we got to get a stop there. Justin Joseph is putting together a nice day at the face-off X already. Six of eight face-offs won by the Drexel transfer coming in from LIU for this season, and he has gotten this Dragons team another offensive set after the goal as that one is shot wide. Oh, he had Semple on the wing there. I think that was Ben Scandone with the take. Semple was wide open on that lefty wing. Blumen, or excuse me, Donnelly beats his man, and he's got another goal his 20 second of the year. We intro Donnelly, and he's been somewhat quiet early on in this game. He had that missed shot on man up, but just an isolation dodge from x right freeze his hand i love that little pump fake he throws that goal line extended kind of just freezes the goalie and the defenseman he puts his shot on cage and he finishes we're tied up at four back and forth we go under a minute to go here in the first quarter a violation on joseph that'll give it to fairfield So the Stags, if they want, can essentially hold for one here at the end of the quarter. Shot clock, not a factor. Yep, looking to initiate probably with around 20 seconds left here, right? That allows you enough time to maybe play on the second level of your offense. But, you know, at the end of the day, you want the ball to die in this end of the field. Ford dishes it back in front of the goal. Blumenthal with a clean save. Still some time. 10 seconds if he can get it up and out. Long range pass here for the Dragons. Trying to get into the offensive end. Snyder comes up with it. He sends it the length. And that is how this opening quarter will end. So pretty much what we expected between these two. We expected maybe a high scoring affair. That's what we've gotten through one. We're tied up at four. Our CAA Game of the Week on the Cross TV. Travis Eldridge, Marcus Holman back with you on this college lacrosse Saturday from Fairfield, Connecticut, Rafferty Stadium. The site as Drexel and Fairfield are all tied up at four after one. Uh, Marcus, 
what we expected from this one. They played a high-scoring affair last year, kind of felt that way coming in, and the first quarter not disappointing. Yeah, back and forth action, right? Goalies settling in here. You know, teams are pushing transition. And, uh, yeah, it's it, an awesome pace to this game so far. And we've got a flag down here on the faceoff. Again, this would be a nice time if we could page in our expert, Greg Gremlian. <laughs> you know how they page in Gene Serator all the time with these basketball and football games? That would be like if we had Greg here for that. I have no idea what that penalty is for or why, but Drexel's going to be man up. It, it, I believe it may be the third violation at yeah. the faceoff X. It is on Dylan Smith in this first half. So that's big. Because 32nd man up here for Drexel, and now at every single violation for the rest of this half for Fairfield at the faceoff X, it'll be another 30-second penalty. Donnelly walks it in. Yeah, big stop by Snyder. He's had a couple of those here man down that have been key for Fairfield. Yep. Coach Baxter actually was really complimentary of, of Snyder's game, just saying he had the ability to make clutch saves. And it sparks Fairfield there. It almost had a great look at the cage in, in transition. Paparossi, I'm kind of surprised he didn't shoot that. Yeah, I thought he had the – he was kind of drifting below goal line, so I guess he just felt like he couldn't take that shot. But you maintain possession, and you get another man down stop. I think that's three now for Fairfield. Yeah, and what it does now is you – are assured that you're back to even strength here. The penalty still winding down as he was going in transition. Probably wanted to make sure let's get everybody back on the field. Make sure this is back to six on six. Will Consoli moves it along. This is Gilbert. Good movement here. Fairfield offensively. Papa Rosie. A lefty laser that goes wide. McKenna there for the backup. 13 seconds left to shoot. See if McKenna goes to work here from X. Working against Udovich. Good defense. Udovich comes up with the ground ball. Really nice defense there. Again, stick out in the gloves. That's an attackman's worst nightmare. And you can keep it simple and able to put the ball on the ground there for your defense. Udovich, another guy who actually just came back from injury. His first game back was last week against Hampton. Trying to get back into the feel of playing a full game. Played almost the entire game against Hampton. Even though Drexel took care of business there down in Virginia, 18-4. to four. Just Coach Brian Volker wanted to make sure he had a feel for the game again coming into this game against Fairfield. Big hit defensively here for the Stags. Ball is loose, and it's picked up by Fairfield. Yeah, it looked like that was simple, trying to maybe toe drag through a couple guys. Not quite sure that's that's in his uh, strong suit there, in his bag. Obviously, we, we mentioned his statistics earlier, so a um, little bit sloppy from from. Both offenses here with, with just some turnovers, but Fairfield will get another crack at it here. Jake Gilbert bringing the ball back out toward the top. Stags looking to get to 2-1 and one here in conference play. This would be a huge win for Fairfield. Coming in 1-1 one and one after a 11-7 loss to Towson last week. Papa Rossi can't get it by Blumenthal. Kept it out. Good two-man offense there from Fairfield. I think that was Rob Moore on the invert behind. Nice throwback. They're able to get a good look at it, but Blumenthal closes the door. Just gobbling it up right at his feet. And Ross Blumenthal, who had been the starter during that magical run a couple of seasons ago, back in 2021, when Drexel... Got hot at the end of the year, won the CAA championship, and then nearly beat Notre Dame in the first round of the NCAAs. But here in the last two years, including coming into this year, he was splitting time with Drew McGill, sophomore from Alabama. However, he's played so well in the last several games that 
Coach Volker has stuck with him for the entire game. And Blumenthal, after a kind of slow start here today, started to see the ball a little bit better. Yep, from the Friends School in Baltimore, alma mater of the great Kyle Harrison. Casey Waller with his shot wide. And that's, uh, that's a good guy to be mentioned in any type of <laughs> no doubt conversation with. Even if you just ended up going to the same school. <laughs> Casey Waller, another shot. That one slides in. Dragons back on top five to four. Waller, just three goals on the season coming into today. And it's late in the shot clock. He puts his head down against a pole here. And this is just gritty, right? You're just... Going to the rack, eyes are down, not looking to feed, and he's able to shoot that overhand high to low. Right again, a momentum goal. Seven seconds left on the shot clock. That's big for Drexel. Uh, you mentioned that the goals for Waller, just three goals coming into today. However, has scored in two of his last three games, now make it three of his last four. So he's getting it going here in the right time of the year. Yep, and those are like the glue guys, you know, for, for any team moving forward into this time of the year, right, that you want to step up, you know, your, maybe your second midfield line, your guys coming back from injuries, et cetera. Coaches are hoping that they can just flow and fit into the offense and make some big plays there, um, just like Waller did. Another face-off win for Justin Joseph. Gets another possession here for Drexel. Now 8 of 11 at the faceoff dot for Joseph. Luke Tomac stepped down, shot just high. Fantastic look there from Connor Hooley throwing that skip pass through the defense. Tom Schreiber-esque. Here's Tomac again. Already a couple of points today, a goal and an assist. For the Connecticut kid. Another look, and he's got a pair. Tomac steps down, and his 14th goal of the year makes it a two-goal Dragons lead. Tomac's a big boy. He's listed at 6'2", 200, but here he's just catching and shooting on that low wing. Quick release. The pass just right on his ear, and he's able to fire it in five-hole there. Ended up missing last year after a serious knee injury last fall, which was a real killer because in that run back in 2021 where Drexel won the CAA championship, he, as a freshman, had really come on strong down the stretch of the year. It was, there was high expectations for him as part of this midfield unit going into last year as a sophomore, but missed all of last season due to injury. And it's kind of picked up this year where he left off as a freshman. Now 14 goals now up to 20 points on the year yeah shout out to luke man i mean knee injuries those serious injuries at this level are, are you know are tough they're hard to come back from there's dog days of rehab and a lot of you know mental stress there as well and and you know for him to battle back and be able to score goals like he did earlier in a big game today that's good stuff Speaking of scoring, there's the freshman from Hershey, Pennsylvania, Jack Joyner with his third goal of the year. Part of the second midfield unit. That thing's sweet. Drexel up by three. Yeah, Joyner going down the righty alley, rolls back, and he's able to beat the slide with, again, another low shot on Snyder there. And you're kind of seeing Drexel take advantage of all these face-off wins now. And all the momentum is with the Dragons. You know, Marcus, he comes from Chocolate Town, USA in Hershey, Pennsylvania. And that spin move was smooth like milk chocolate. <laughs> Love it. So timeout Fairfield. They just want to get things going back here in the right direction. Obviously, a three-goal deficit. No... Nothing crazy for this Stags offense from what we saw in the first quarter, but they've been held scoreless here in the second. 
after they scored the first two goals, led two to nothing, and gone back and forth here for a while. Andrew Baxter wants to talk things over here with his group. Yep, and we had a rule on our team a few years ago was it was no turkeys, right? As a defense, you don't want to allow three goals in a row. That's a bowling term. Um, and Drexel able to, to capitalize and score three straight. Those are usually indicative of wins. So it'll be interesting to see how Fairfield snaps back after this timeout. Uh, timeout gives us a chance to remind you we've got a game of the week coming your way here on Tuesday. Make sure to tune in for some midweek CAA men's lacrosse action. Tuesday afternoon, 2.30 p.m. Eastern time, a battle of the Hawks when you have St. Joe's take on Monmouth along the Jersey Shore. You can see that game right here on Lacrosse TV coming your way on Tuesday. Yeah, Monmouth in action right now, struggling against Hofstra. They're down 10 to 4 in the fourth. And then St. Joe's has a battle later today with Richmond. Should be a good game for them. Tell you what, that St. Joe's team tested Duke, who, I mean, we saw here last night Duke taking down Virginia, how good that Duke team is. So that St. Joe's team is going to be game uh, to go here as we head down the stretch of the year. A very, very entertaining Atlantic 10 conference, just like we're seeing yep. here in the CAA. Yeah, and they're not sneaking up on anybody after their performance last year in, in the NCAA playoffs. So, um, Which makes it even more impressive because everybody knows they're good and they're still competing with some of the, the best teams in the country. Yep, no doubt. Levi Anderson at attack, Cole yep. facing off. They're, they're, they're polished. They're good on both ends of the field. And a... And a scrum after ball had come loose around midfield for Drexel, but the Dragons keep possession. And they'll settle things down. Still just over 30 seconds left to operate. Three straight goals for the Dragons. Is Semple way away from the cage. Yep, need a stop here for Fairfield. Whether it's a save, a turnover, whatever it is, just got to get that ball out of this end. Hooley spins back. Tomac comes back toward the middle. Good recovery there by the Stags, but then they let Tomac get free, and he's got a first-half hat trick. Make it four straight for the Dragons. Tomac certainly fully recovered from his injury with some really nice footwork here. He draws the double team, steps away, and then is able to re-attack that sliding defender right? You bounce away and that recovering defender is looking for someone else to guard. If you re-attack at that time, there's no one ready to slide. As you can see there, he's able to almost walk it in for a goal. So Tomac now up to four points in his first half. A big game. Four games this year with four points. Now you can make it five. He's done it here in just the first half. Another face-off win here for the Dragons. Here they come in transition behind the back pass and another score. Ooh. That's one for the highlight reel. Sean Donnelly cashes it in. Drexel Ooh. is feeling it. Hooley set him up with the BTP pass and Donnelly going to make sure it ends up on the highlight reel. Oh, you'd love to see that. Donnelly's hype. I think a BTP pass is better than a BTP goal, in my opinion. And that was certainly pleasant for the eyes there. Drexel is locked and loaded right now. Tell you what, Hooley's looking like you out there. I've seen that pass from you a time or two on a PLL field. <laughs> Typically to the likes of Will Manny. I know you guys are no longer teammates, but a little throwback for everybody. Yep, and it's a, it's a good one to have in your bag there as, as a point attackman because – too often I've had that pass knocked down from that approaching defender. So you throw the behind the back to kind of shield that passing lane. Hooley executed it to perfection there. Well, Drexel won the faceoff, but they had to go backward and they didn't get it over midfield in time. So now the Stags with it, but they hand it right back to Drexel. That is a killer of a turnover. Oh, just killers. Quickly the other way, and it's Drexel again. Semple has his second. All Dragons here in the second quarter.
I love the pace of this game right now. Look at Drexel. They're in the zone, man. They're just having fun. Everybody's eating. We go end to end. Fairfield with a tough turnover. And then that leads to the Drexel goal. Simple doing what he does best. That is catch and shoot. 17 gold, one assist for the Canadian finisher. It's now seven consecutive goals for Drexel. Another timeout here on the field. We're going to take it as well. All Dragons, a 6-0 start to the second quarter for Drexel. It's 10-4 here on our CAA Game of the Week. We welcome you back here to our CAA Game of the Week. We've got some CAA women's lacrosse action coming your way next weekend. Drexel hosts Elon in Philadelphia next Friday, noon Eastern time. Brendan Glasheen and Kylie O'Miller on the call for that one. You can see it right here. Watch lacrosstv.com. Back here in Fairfield, Connecticut. It is all Drexel here in the second quarter. If you're just joining us, it was tied at four after one. However, the Dragons have scored seven in a row, including six straight to start this second quarter. And they have themselves a 10-4 lead here past the midway point of the second quarter. And for Fairfield, they really just haven't had the ball too much, right? You know, you, you're losing the faceoff category 12-3. to three. They've tried to push and had a couple turnovers in transition, right? Just settle in, run some offense, and you can't get six goals back at a time, right? It's just one at a time. Got to share the rock, play confident, take your shots when you get them. It's a much-needed offensive possession for the Stags, but Gilbert has to retreat. Good defense by Drexel. Rob Moore. Ball sent in front. It comes all the way toward the sideline, and it can't be saved before it goes out of bounds. Another fair field turnover. Good short stick defense there by number one, Connor McVicker for Drexel. Right, you're not you're rocking number one playing D mid. You better be locking people down, and McVicker certainly did there. Yeah, pretty good family of lacrosse players is brother uh -oh. Brent as this one's turned over at midfield finally uh. got McKenna great catch and finish he's got three here in the first half as Fairfield's finally on the board in the second quarter McKenna with a hat trick I was waiting for number seven I think it was that Ryan Lancaster to throw him the ball he, I don't think he saw him for a second McKenna was just streaking down the middle of the field able to catch and tiptoe the crease and put that ball away in transition. Big goal for Fairfield. Yeah, he's a big target, Jack McKenna. <laughs> Can't Tough guy it. to miss. He finally got him. I was interested in seeing 6'6", 220 last year as a freshman. This year it's at 6'6", 240. <laughs> it's so that I'm college in, weight program. He has been in the gym getting that protein. And we've got a... Looks like a face-off violation, the third one on Drexel. So this is a man-up opportunity for Fairfield now. Yeah, big momentum opportunity here. Again, I mentioned that word so much. I'm sure people listening at home maybe are tired of me saying it, but lacrosse is such a game of that. It's a game of runs. The team that can manage the runs the best is usually the one that comes, comes out on top. Seven man-up goals this season for Fairfield. Be a big time to add another, but Blumenthal goes low and reads it for the same. Uh-oh. Ball loose behind the cage. Great play. Nice recovery by Trexel. Now a chance to go in transition. Unsettled situation. Curcio spins back. It's actually a delay of game penalty on Justin Joseph, the faceoff man for Drexel. But we are back to even strength as Drexel kills off the 30-second man down. Tomac has had a huge first half of the wing. Mulcahy actually hasn't. I haven't said his name a whole lot, reigning CAA player of the year. Drexel just hasn't needed him to do a whole lot. Here he is, stepped down, shot 
eaten up by the Fairfield defender. That is one that's going to leave a bruise. Yeah, that's that's a smart decision to just call it dead there. Great eat. This is Rory Thompson, the sophomore from Binghamton, New York. Let's go. And Get the crowd going. There is going to be a large bruise somewhere on his body here tomorrow morning. Yep, and that'll be one that'll be highlighted in film as an effort play. I've seen Fairfield dive out some end lines today. You know, they're definitely hustling all over this field. It's They know the importance of this conference game. They're playing with that max effort mentality. Hey, this is a it, it, you, you. This is what you expect from a team coached by Andrew Baxter. I mean, of course, he was part of the coaching staff for that national championship team for Yale. Also, spent some time at Ohio State. You talk about Yale and Ohio State; those are two tough, gritty, physical programs. So, no surprise yeah. to see Fairfield have that kind of effort here, coached by Coach Baxter. For sure, those are. I mean, programs that have an identity, right? They, they know who they are. You know, when you show up to play Yale, that they're going to give max effort. They're going to be diving. They're going to be checking. They're going to be dialed in and similar with, with Ohio state as well. Just very buttoned up programs and two great head coaches and Andy Shea at Yale and, and Nick Myers at Ohio state. I have a couple of different midfielders in there here for fair Fairfield as Cam Barrisano sees some time. The Junior from Massachusetts. And here's Moore dancing at the top of the box. Barisano tracks it down. Under 30 seconds left of this shot clock for Fairfield. 2.30 to go in the first half. Drexel has scored six of the seven goals here in this quarter. McKenna loses it. Defended tightly by Gukwa. Hit it. Step down. Shot. Blumenthal, a huge save. Big save there from Blumenthal. He's – if I have a scouting report on him right now, it's that he's kind of gobbling everything up right at his feet. Seems like he drops low on those low shots. Right, He had one on man up with the last possession, and he just is all over that one there. They had Hooley here on this backside for the skip pass, but Drexel yeah. doesn't throw it. And again, if you're, you know, if you're Fairfield, you're like, that's a pretty good offensive possession. You grind down and you get, you know, a 12 yard step down with under 15 seconds in the shot clock, but you got to score those. A lot of credit to the veteran goalie Blumenthal and how he's responded because it was a slow start to this game. Fairfield yeah. was making everything. And now all of a sudden you look at the stats, he's got five saves to go along with five goals against. He's now at 50%. Yep. Settling in nicely. Nice takeaway. Stags getting a much needed stop. Here they come the other way. Be smart. Be smart. Maybe time out here. You can get your guys on and run some offense or. I don't think they have anymore. I believe they used both of their timeouts yeah. already this half. Uh, uh, maybe not. Maybe somebody else had one. The Stags do take the timeout with 50 seconds to go here in the half. That's the coach in me, Travis. <laughs> <laughs> All over you, it. Yeah, you 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 just had a, a sixth sense for these things. So shot clock doesn't matter. 50 seconds to go. It's, you can hold for one here if you're the Stags. Do you, Marcus, in this type of situation, do you, do you like putting it in one player's hands? Do you draw something out, what, up? What, what do you like to do here, end of quarter type deal? Yeah, I, I think if, you know, personally you might have a, a set play or two, um, maybe to free up McKenna, right, your, your best goal scorer. Um, or just judging off of how this game has gone, I think you're, if you're Fairfield, you just kind of run some offense. I like Gilbert or Rob Moore initiating. They've been doing a pretty good job on those wings with those short sticks. Um, and then Ford has been pretty good off ball as well. And you have options here, right? And again, you know, the, the goal is as badly as you want to score a goal here, 
the last thing you want to do is take a shot with 25 seconds left on the, the clock and then give Drexel a chance to score. So, you know, you definitely want to score, but you also want to limit um, any opportunity that you have to, to go minus one. These are these end of quarter situations are something that it's really hard to practice, but they're, they're huge over the course of a season. Um, if, if you can go plus plus one in these, these categories, they're big. I'll we'll see what Fairfield can do here. 50 seconds left in this first half. This game was tied at four after one. The second quarter has been all Dragons. This is a Fairfield team that can put up goals. We saw it last year, losing 19-18 here against the Dragons. Yep, I'm seeing Rob Moore up here, number 50, with a short stick on him. Got it is Ford that looks like he's going to start with it here in the corner. And get everybody a touch here, most likely early on. Maybe not. Moore's just going to hold on to it. He's got a short stick matchup. Yeah, it's one of those things that's like, you know, if you don't need to throw it around the horn, don't <laughs> don't worry. If if I was a defensive coach here for Drexel, if I'm Coach Durkin, I, I would think about, if I had to do it again, maybe just pressuring a little bit so that they can't milk this clock down. But we'll see what they got here offensively and defensively. Here it is for 20 seconds to go in the quarter. Really spreading it out. Looking for that pass back out front. They had him. He just took his eye off it. Consoli can't pick it up. Instead, it's picked up there by Charlie Maley. He sends it the length. And that is how this quarter will end. So an entertaining first half. High score. Fair that that second quarter dominated by the Dragons. One point it scored seven in a row, and they lead ten to five here at the break. We will be back with second half action here in a bit. But for now, it's halftime on the Cross TV. We welcome you back here to Fairfield, Connecticut, Rafferty Stadium. Your CAA game of the week here on the Cross TV. As we get ready to start this third quarter, it is Drexel 10, Fairfield 5, a game that was tied after one quarter, but the Dragons outscoring the Stags 6 to 1 in the second. We'll see how Fairfield responds as we get ready here for the start of the third. Travis Eldridge, Marcus Holman back with you. Marcus, that second quarter, you look at the the faceoffs obviously played a factor. Some quick offensive possessions for Fairfield early, and Drexel took advantage. Yeah, it starts with Justin Joseph, I think, at the faceoff X you mentioned, right? He's won 12 out of 17, really just allowing Drexel to kind of control the pace of the game. Um, you know, if you're a Fairfield fan, you're like, we're, we're not playing that poorly, but just the possession differential, you know, has, has favored Drexel, and they were able to really, really jump – uh, on Fairfield in that second quarter. Leading the way offensively for the Dragons in that first half, Luke Tomac, the redshirt sophomore with four points, three goals and an assist. Sean Donnelly, a couple of goals as well as, as for Max Semple as a faceoff win here for Dylan Smith. Or actually, no, that is not Dylan Smith. They send Tim Lucky back out there. He wins a draw. The Stags get the first offensive set here in the third. Yep, Fairfield just kind of sharing the ball well on the offensive end, initiating from the high wings, getting the ball to McKenna and Ford off of those initial dodges and then, you know, letting your best players do what they do well. They spin it back to Gilbert, now to Will Consoli on the near side. Five saves in that first half for Blumenthal. As Ball gets put on the carpet, and here come the Dragons. All the way Ooh. in, a shot to score. <laughs> Brennan Greenwald with his second goal of the season. The long ball makes it 11-5. to five. Greenwald coast to coast, baby. With some really, really... Solid defense there from the Drexel short stick D media. I'm not quite sure who that was, but he deserves a shout out. Greenwald's able to go coast to coast. Fairfield not really sliding. 
Greenwald's able to put it on cage. And those are really tough shots for goalies to see, especially if you're a pole and you can keep your shot up in kind of that upper third part of the goal. Goalies have a really tough time reading that release point. Give the cost turnover to George Grippo, the short stick D midi from New York. I mean, That's he really helped Travis create the dirty yeah. work. Thank you for giving him a shout out. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I mean, he helped create that play. He, he puts yeah. the ball on the deck and Greenwald does the rest. Yep. And again, like that's something he'll get a stat for the cause turnover, but that should be like worth triple almost because it leads directly to a goal. You should give him, get, at least give him a hockey assist. You keep <laughs> your own stats, you know? Another offensive set here for the Stags, but that pass squeaks all the way through, and they can't keep it in on the end line. Another turnover. A little bit of a force there to the crease. Fairfield now back-to-back -back turnovers in, in their offensive zone. Yeah, now nine turnovers on the day for the Stags. And they, and, you know, sometimes some turnovers, they're in the clearing game. There's pressure. All of them for Fairfield have been essentially on the offensive end. Yep. And there's seven of seven in the stat sheet and clears. So it's been on when they've had the ball in their end, had things set, set up and just not quite crisp with it. And that's the thing, going back to that face-off deficits, right? Like, you know, face-offs don't win or lose you games, right? But if you're losing a lot of face-offs, you've got to be very efficient in your six-on-six -six possessions in Fairfield like you just spoke about, you know, if you're a little sloppy, that that possession differential is going to cost you. But they have an opportunity here in transition. They have numbers. That was Matt Rice, the short stick team midi with that caused turnover. Moved along. Jump shot is why, but the back up there for the Stags. That short stick D middies on both ends making great plays defensively. Yep. Putting the putting the ball in the turf, sparking transition. Nice take there by Papa Rosie. Yeah, Will Consoli, the freshman, has it here on the near side. Now Dean Ford on as part of this midfield unit. Now Ford's going to invert. He's going to take Grippo one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, he likes it back behind here. He's, this is his second or third time back inverting behind the cage. And he has had a stick shacked on that shot. Back up for Fairfield, though. Consoli is there. Going back to the invert here. Good matchup. Early slide coming from Drexel. There it is. They got McKenna. Skip pass back out top, and the shot falls. They've got Rob Moore on the board. The sophomores got one, and they get one back here at 11-6. to six. Just a great pass, and McKenna could have tried to find somebody closer on the crease. Instead, he goes back out top to Moore. Defense trying to recover, and they can't. Moore gets the shot off. Yeah, nice three-man game there. I think that was Papa Rosi on the initial dodge, drawing the double team, getting that ball out of his stick. He'll get the hockey assist for that one for sure. Solid possession there from Fairfield. It'll be interesting to see if they go back to that invert after having some success. Long pass across, and Drexel does get it into the offensive end, but the ball is loose. Dragons scoop it up, and now they have a chance to get the possession. Yeah, you can see Fairfield jumping into a 10-man ride here on these face-off lose backs, right? That's a good adjustment by Coach Baxter. We mentioned his Yale um, pedigree from earlier in his career, you know, notoriously known for that 10-man ride. So that's a way that you can, even though if you lose the initial face-off, you can get into that 10-man ride and try to push the tempo and create some more chaos in the middle of the field. Well, and they're not losing the faceoff and having it come forward where Drexel gets an easy offensive set. You're making them work for it. Yeah. They almost have they essentially have to clear it. Step down shot saved by Snyder. Now five saves for Will Snyder, the freshman. 
And as Ryan Lancaster brings it across into the box for Fairfield. Snyder with another save down that end, giving him five on the day. He's going to have to have a big second half here. Fairfield wants to stay in this game. Nice take, but a better stop by Blumenthal. Rob Moore had a full head of steam coming down that alley, but Blumenthal stayed on it the whole way. And Travis, you can see, right? What would your scouting report be on, on Blumenthal right now where he's making his saves? Low. A lot of shots he's gobbling up right at his shins, his feet. We'll see if, if Fairfield notices if they're able to adjust, right? Try to find that off hip area or even a couple up in that top shelf part of the net. So this Drexel team up 11 to 6, six minutes into the second half. Five and three overall coming into today. Two and zero oh in conference play. Trying to win three straight to start CAA play for the first time since 2013 as Snyder comes up with a nice save. Nice move. Got numbers again. It's Matt Rice again, the short stick D midi to Ford. Ball on the turf. Fairfield just felt like you had to have that one, and Papa Rossi makes the play. Now it's Bryce Ford who has his man behind the cage. Trying to see if they can set up some kind of two-man game there behind at X. Yeah, I like Fairfield, like the pace that they're playing at right now. It's a little bit chaotic. Right? Trying to push tempo, push transition. I'm good with that as they try to claw their way back in. Consoli here on the near side. He loses it again. Spin it back out top. Cam Barisano seeing some time here early in the third quarter. Pass a little wide for Consoli. As it squirts back into the Drexel end, and they pick up the ground ball. Ready for the 10-man ride again that we spoke about. I don't think Fairfield was able to jump into it as quickly there. Good job by Drexel just getting that ball up and out. Yeah, no Might problem. have numbers here. Substitution game. They got McVicker. Little give and go. Snyder snags it out of midair. I think that's one is Drexel. You just want to just take a possession here. And we've got a whistle. Yeah, and I think it, that was interference with the yeah. goalie. I think that's a free clear, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, they... Fairfield's able to clear the ball without any blockage here. Interference with the goalie, right? As an attackman, you're not allowed to touch the goalie's stick or body if they're in the crease, right? That's kind of their home, their hub. So Ford will start things back up here right on the big F at midfield here at Rafferty Stadium. Yep, and, and I mean, Fairfield's controlling the pace right now in this quarter. They've just got to put some shots home, and they do. There it is. It's Paparossi with his first goal of the day. They're back to 11-7. to seven. Get the Paparazzi out. Max doing a really nice job just on this drift cut through X. This is a great skill for attackmen to have. We've seen teams like Maryland, who are so good at this ability for those low wing dodges to just push that ball forward through X. And then if you're an attackman, you've got to be able to turn the corner with both hands if you're going to play behind the goal. So Max does a really nice job there and finishes high on Blumenthal. So maybe they heard us talking about the scout. He once again have Lucky out there taking the face off for Fairfield. And they've done a pretty good job making Drexel go back with these face-off wins, but Joseph just continues to be stellar. However, the Dragons have five seconds to get this over midfield. Risky pass. They make it. Yep, Joseph now 13 wins out of 20 total face-offs.
but I mean, you got to give a lot of credit to Fairfield for the adjustment. They kind of said, well, if we're not going to win it clean right off the clamp, we're going to at least make sure he has to go back with it. And then we're going to try to make their life hard and see if we can get the possession a different way as Tomac shoots it wide. <laughs> and I love the effort from Snyder there. The dive attempt, even though he's a solid 20 yards behind the <laughs> Drexel player who's going to run the ball out. I love it, though. It kind of sets the tone like, hey, we're not going anywhere. We're going to be relentless. Nice Snyder save comes there. up with Here that comes another stop. dive out opportunity. Yeah, I'll keep it with Drexel. Semple getting involved. You know, you mentioned Snyder, and Coach Baxter was saying, look, it's a guy, he played goalie in St. Anthony's on Long Island, played in a couple of different state championship games. So he's like, he's played in big games, big environments before. So he comes here to college, and despite the fact that he's starting games for the first time in Division One, he is was ready and not, and not phased by this level. Yeah, and that's... I mean, if you want to have a, a nice X factor quality in your goalie, that's definitely one, the ability to make clutch saves. He mentioned that his save percentage in the fourth quarter has been higher than it has been in the other three quarters. So we'll see if he continues to step up here for Fairfield. Well, okay, he sends it down low, shot wide. Drexel here keeps the backup. And they're giving a reset there. I think Snyder got a piece of that. He must have. Maybe off his foot. Didn't. Obviously, wasn't a clean save, but Snyder on cue, making another big save. Long defensive set here for the Stags. Can they hold up? Mulcahy. It's been quiet today. No points yet for the reigning CAA Player of the Year. 21 points in the season coming in. Tomac, he has not been quiet. A laser, and he's got four. Tomac pays the price, sweeping across the middle, going to his left hand, and it just rockets a shot near side. I think this one sticks side high. And kind of just, you can see both players just on that collision. Lacrosse is a physical contact sport. We got pads on, right? I think sometimes people forget that, right? There's, it seems like there's so many flags now with any type of, of contact. Obviously, we want to protect players that are not able to protect themselves, but just some good physical contact there. If you're going to run across the middle and take a shot, you want your defender to make that shooter pay. And we've got a whistle here in that battle for the faceoff, and Fairfield comes up with it. And it just felt like Fairfield was – crawling and creeping back into the game. And that's a huge goal for Drexel to kind of stop that, that two goal run by Fairfield. Yeah. There felt like there was a little bit of a momentum shift. Yeah. See if the stags can grab some of that momentum back trailing by fives in here, four minutes to go here in this third quarter. Back to the invert for Fairfield. Again, Drexel double team, move the ball and then look inside. It's a tough shot for Ford back up there for Fairfield. Actually, excuse me, that was Moore who shot it. Now Ford with the backup triggers things in from X. Picks up the short stick D midi matchup. He's got his brother there. Dean Ford wrapping around. Skip pass. Consoli has it saved by Blumenthal. And they wow. give the back up to Drexel. That is a huge save. Really nice offense by Fairfield. Had the Drexel defense turning, moving, and off of a skip pass. Blumenthal is able to gobble that up, I think, off his shin maybe. Oh, look out. Turnover in transition. Consoli, skip nice. pass across, and Fairfield makes Drexel pay. It's Ford with his third, the hat trick for Bryce, and it's 12-8. to eight. And failed clears are the number one cause of stress for head coaches across the country, <laughs> but they're also probably the number one cause of quick goals going against you. Nice job by Fairfield sharing the ball, making the extra pass there. 
It's Ford on the finish. Papa Rosie with the nice one touch pass on the back pipe. Yeah. Max Papa Rosie has put together a nice game, couple of assists now to go along with his goal. It's a big ground ball. And it's the Stags who come up with oh it. Oh my gosh. They've got Papa Rosie ahead, but oh, they've they got a whistle. Did they call oh. timeout? I was thinking oh. it had like timeout, timeout, but Oh, Max Paparosi was wide open, but Fairfield coach Andrew Baxter calls the timeout to keep the possession. And so they'll take the timeout here with 3.10 to go in the third quarter. Stags trying to get back in this late in the third. Remember, we were tied at four after one. A big run by the Dragons in the second quarter gave them a sizable lead at the break, but Fairfield hanging around here in the third as we will take the timeout with the game as well. It's 12-8 Drexel, 3-10 to go in the quarter. We welcome you back here to Rafferty Stadium in Fairfield, Connecticut. Stags will have the possession here late in the third quarter. Coming out of this timeout, trailing 12-8. to eight. Travis and Marcus back with you. You know what, Marcus? Both these goalies kind of struggled early, but both of them now with Blumenthal seven saves, Snyder with eight. They've both really settled in and made things a lot more difficult than these offenses were seeing early. Yeah, and, and similar statue statures by these goalies, big righties who have really done a nice job with low shots. And another one there by Blumenthal. I think they get the reset. Yeah. Yeah. Getting a piece of that. Another save for Ross. Possession stays with Fairfield, though, with the fresh 60 seconds. They got nice Consoli enough. on the skip pass. Blumenthal keeps it out. And Travis, I couldn't tell if Blumenthal saved that cleanly or if someone ate that shot and kind of deflected it his way. Either way, big stop for Drexel. Let's see if they can clear. They've kind of struggled here. Loose on the mm -hmm. sideline. Is it going out of bounds? It's like a, a third baseman trying to yeah. field a bunt down the third baseline, waiting for it to trickle over the sideline. Nice poise there by Fairfield. I think that was number two, Dean Ford, to just let that ball go out instead of trying to pick it up and, and tightrope that sideline. They got McKenna and Paparossi back there behind the cage. They're setting up a two-man game. Now instead it's Consoli. Spins back to the left, shot wide. I mean, Fairfield is, they've dominated time of possession in this third quarter. It doesn't seem like Drexel's had, honestly, one good possession. Here's McKenna. Someone's open. Oh, the pass Tip. just sailed. Referee had it tipped. Yeah, I think someone got a piece of that. Yep. Okay. Nice recovery there. Stick up in the lane. Nice save by Blumenthal again. Blumenthal now into double digits with 10 saves on the day. Yep, and again, just comfortable sliding to that bounce shot. And a nice job too, right? Save it clean. You can get it out to your defenseman and just let him sprint the ball up the field so you don't have to deal with a 10-man ride or you know the struggles that you've dealt with in the clearing game and now this is a huge possession here for for both teams wow. fairfield gets the ball loose but drexel hooley able to recover and get, keep the possession matt rice on the short stick defensive midfield there he's been great today the sophomore yeah. for a, who played at loyola blakefield in high school nice take Shot wide. Snyder went low. Still 21 seconds of the shot clock. 30 seconds to go in the quarter. Mulcahy moves it along. Tomac stepped down wide. You don't hate that shot from Luke Tomac with what he's done so far today. Four goals already. Five-point day for the Connecticut kid. It looks like Fairfield's jumped into a little bit of a zone here. Inside look, Hooley has it stopped by Snyder. 
Time winding down here in the quarter. They just sail it as Blumenthal comes up with it. And that is how the third quarter will come to an end. So Fairfield trying to get back into this game. However, they will trail by four as we go to the fourth in Connecticut. The Dragons look to get looking to get to 3-0 and in CAA play. They're 15 minutes away. Fourth quarter on the other side of Lacrosse TV. A damp, dreary day here in Connecticut. Part of your college lacrosse Saturday, but Drexel doesn't care. They've got a four-goal lead, trying to get to 6-3 and three on the season, 3-0 and oh in conference play as we start the fourth quarter here on the Cross TV. Travis Eldridge, Marcus Holman with you in this CAA game of the week, and it's Drexel again who wins the faceoff. Yeah, looking back to that third quarter, Fairfield really in control but only able to win the quarter by one goal, three to two. So Drexel still in the driver's seat here. Look for them to take some longer possessions, right, and just try and get into a flow offensively that they really didn't have much of in the third. It's Mulcahy, who has been held without a point so far today, just two shots. Yeah, and hasn't really been too aggressive either. He's been wor working off ball a lot. You know, obviously Drexel at 12 goals without your, you know, one of your best players really scoring is pretty impressive. Here is Mulcahy, spins back to the left, Snyder with the stop. Ten saves now for Will Snyder, the freshman. And right on cue, he gets a really nice look rolling back to the middle of the field, but Snyder able to gobble it up. Got numbers if you want it for Fairfield. Lancaster held on to it. Now back out to Ford, and they'll settle things down a bit. There's a smart play by Lancaster. He's waiting for that defense for Drexel to make the move that gave him the opening, and they actually did a pretty good job not over committing to any single one person, so he just turns back. Drexel pressing. X a little bit behind. You see that defender behind the goal on McKenna, right? Not allowing Fairfield to throw those drift passes that they have. As Dean Ford. Matter. He's got four. Excuse me. He's got one today. He joins his brother in the score sheet. His second goal of the season, and it gets this thing back to a three-goal game. I like this guy, Dean Ford. He kind of reminds me of uh, my professional comparison would be Jack Near, defensive midfielder who's played a lefty and just kind of a two-way guy. Um, you know, Jack of all trades. I kind of, you know, quote unquote, a throwback midfielder, a guy that plays on both ends of the field and a big goal. Nice overhand release there for Dean Ford. Good to see him back healthy here this year. Just his fifth game of the season as Joseph wins another faceoff. The LIU transfer has been a Really valuable pickup in the transfer portal for the Dragons this year. Honestly, may have been one of their major issues last year. One of the reasons that a team that returned a ton didn't have as much success as they wanted. The struggles of the faceoff effects as they go off sides here at midfield. They give it right back to Fairfield. Step down shot. And Ford missed it. And no backup. Or do they give it to him? They do give it to Fairfield. Yeah, Fairfield got it. And you see there another face-off win by Drexel. Fairfield forcing them back. They go into their 10-man ride, and then Drexel runs offside. So Fairfield doing a nice job with that halftime adjustment. Credit to Coach Baxter and the Stags for adjusting, right? They might lose the clamp, but in reality, that's, you know, that's a win for you right now. You retain possession Ooh, and get a good look on Cage. Blumenthal stops more. McVicker has it stripped in midfield. Here comes Ford. No numbers for Fairfield. He saw a lot of navy blue jerseys back, and so Ford will settle it down. Another ride back for Fairfield. They've had so many of them. I mean, that those are the plays that have kept them in this game. Yep. No doubt. And you look at the face-off disparity. 17 of 25, Joseph. 
Fairfield's won just eight face-offs between Smith and Lucky. Wow. And a shot and a score through the defensive check. Fairfield gets one from Consoli, and they're back within two. Looks like it might be a timeout here for Drexel. Consoli with a nice righty sweep. We've got ourselves a ball game here, Travis. Fairfield just hanging around, playing tough in the middle of the field. Trying to defend home turf here. Nice bouncer. I mean, with the stick lodged up in his hands, he somehow gets that shot off. And Will Consoli, the freshman with his 17th goal of the year, former nominee for New Jersey Player of the Year coming out of Glen Rock, New Jersey. And the Stags are right back in this thing, down by just two at 12 to 10. Well, it gives us a chance to remind you, you can join us next Saturday for our CAA Game of the Week. This could be the start of a really great conference rivalry. The Drexel Dragons hosting the Stony Brook Seawolves for the first time as conference foes here in the CAA. Opening face-off set for 2 p.m. Eastern time. You can see the game right here. Watch lacrosstv.com. You know, one of the great things about the realignment in the CAA, the addition of programs like Estony Brook who already had some regional rivalries with teams in the league and now they just become league foes. <laughs> they got another another Long Island Philadelphia battle to enjoy here as part of conference play. No doubt. That one feels pretty natural, doesn't it? Stony Brook <laughs> it does. just seems like you know, the, I feel like uh the American East and the, the CAA conferences are, are pretty similar and just in terms of their approach to the game. It's it's Gritty, tough players, um, that Long Island flair, right? That Philadelphia toughness, and um, Stony Brook is is going to fit right in into this league. Yeah, they they have, and Trexel uh, trying to win today to try to keep themselves the top of the standings. You look back at their overtime win a couple of weeks ago against Towson. That could be gigantic toward the end of the year if they keep this up because that becomes Towson, of course, a team that ex is expecting to be competing at the top of the league with the likes of Delaware. You're direct, so you have that win already in your back pocket. You win this one, you get to 3-0. and You're feeling really good about your chances at being a top couple of seed in the conference. Yep. Still wide open. I would I would give Delaware the benefit of the doubt probably as the, as the favorite, but as we've seen in, in years past, like this is anyone's league. Um, and as we continue on throughout the spring, it'll all lead up until the CAA tournament, which is always, always a dandy. Yeah. I mean, honestly, last year seeing Delaware get on the, the run that they went on in order to win the title was kind of surprising just because we went in thinking, well, this could be anybody's tournament. And it typically is Delaware just dominant right. on their way to the CAA championship. Drexel with the ball. Tomac shoots wide. Tomac with the hot hand. You can see him being aggressive there. Looks like Fairfield's jumping into a zone here off the end line. If you're Drexel, you want to use stick fakes, right? Step into the gaps, get two guys to play you. Down to under 15 seconds on the shot clock. I don't think that hit Snyder. It didn't. So down to 11 as Tomac misses. Mulcahy there for the backup. They got to go quick. Donnelly, skip pass on the no look. That was pretty. And then just trying to do something with the shot clock winding down. Ends up not hurting Drexel, but it is a shot clock violation. Yeah, and, and you know, you're up two goals. Obviously, you want to score, but, you know, not a bad possession. A lot, you know, you had a couple different shots there uh, for Drexel. You know, you end the possession trying to force feed the crease, but you throw it east-west. So you're able to sub off, get your guys on the field. And now you just got to dig in defensively. Strectal defense, I'm sure, is, is feeling a little gassed. They've been on their heels, it seems like, this second half. See, Fairfield starting to get a little bit of momentum back here. This is Dean Ford. He's been part of that. Scored one of the last goals.
Consoli down on the doorstep. Paparozzi has it stopped by Blumenthal, who's ready for it low again. Blumenthal holding up his end of the bargain. Stop. I feel like he's made all the saves that he should, right? He's, he's let a couple in, obviously, but he's making the ones that he should make. Another great ride by Fairfield, and they force the turnover. It's funny. It just seems like <laughs> a pattern that I've recognized just being around the game, you know, pretty much my entire life is these failed clears, like, it, it seems they seem – all different in a way, but it's it's almost a mental piece of the game at this point, right? It's like every time Drexel makes a stop, it's like in their head that you know Fairfield's ridden a couple back, and now it's just it just seems like a pattern. Now it's like they can't even do simple stuff easy. McKenna trying to bully his way in. They wait for that one to go over the end line for the backup. Fairfield keeps the possession. Papa Rossi, couple of assists, also a goal today. Fairfield scored three in a row to get back within two. Step down shot. Consoli makes it a one goal game. Consoli is heating up. Back to back buckets for number one. And I love the, the change of shooting location here, right? He swept across the middle on his last goal and went with a bouncer in the top shelf. And this one he pulls up and bangs that top right corner overhand. And then a little high step to the sideline. I love the backup goalies getting height. This Stags team is feeling it. And we've got a violation on Drexel. Gives it right back to Fairfield. With eight minutes to go in the quarter, 12 to 11, they are within one. They trailed by as many as six goals here today. That happened back toward the end of the first half when they trailed 10 to 4. But credit to the Stags. They have not gone away, and they have a chance to tie this game on this possession. No doubt. They've been playing hard from the first whistle, and... It hasn't always been pretty, but this is what great effort can give you. Oh, that's unlucky for Ford. It hit him, and it ended up just falling underneath his feet. Leads to a Drexel ground ball, and here come the Dragons. Greenwald already has a goal today. Snyder stops it low. Rebound, shot, and a score. Oh the Dragons cleaning up the trash. It's Semple who's got his third. Is that simple from the ground? Yeah. All I saw was the net move. Wow. A little bit of an ambitious take here. <laughs> but the rebound comes out. Oh, simple. Oh, my gosh. The Canadian influence on display. That looked like a slap shot. I mean, just so fast and picking up the ground ball and essentially releasing it almost in one motion. Yeah, and the change of levels there on that is, is I mean, what a skill. So it ends the Fairfield four-goal run, and it puts the Dragons back up by two. What a momentum shift that was. It looked like the Stags had a chance to tie it. Snyder, or excuse me, Smith, though, wins a faceoff for Fairfield. Ball Big is loose up in the air. Here comes Drexel. Might have numbers. Wow. Donnelly up top. Back-to-back -to -back huge transition goals for Drexel, and they're back up by three. And there's Donnelly. He's been kind of quiet since the first quarter, it seems like. Obviously, he's just the finisher here. This play started in the middle of the field for Drexel. Oh, and Snyder got a piece of that. Oh, Went right off his off shoulder. shoulder. Drexel with two quick ones, though, just completely takes back control of this game. In a minute and 10 seconds, this goes from a possible tie game as Fairfield had possession 
to now back to a three goal Drexel lead. Connor Hooley picks up the assist, the freshman from Minnesota. He's got a couple of assists to go along with a goal today for Drexel. Now three goals for Sean Donnelly, a hat trick for him, hat trick for Semple, four goals for Tomac. Another possession for the Dragons after it felt like Fairfield had started to figure out a little something at the face-off X for a couple of possessions in a row as Hooley gets another a four-point day for the freshman. Hooley's got game. Stepping up in a big, big way for Drexel. You mentioned him having the assist earlier in the transition goal here. He just squares his guy up. Right, Nice job kind of keeping his body posture upright and then just snaps his wrist low. And he's able to beat Snyder to the spot. And then I love this. This is, this is great. Staying on the field, taking a wing. Or maybe he's staying on down the attack end, it looked like, I guess. It's now a career high for the freshman Connor Hooley in points with four, two goals and two assists. He actually came into today with only one assist on the season through the first eight games. Well, he's added two to the tally today. Big day for the freshman. Dang, lacrosse is, is <laughs> such a beautiful game, man. It's like everything's going Fairfield's way. I got all the momentum. And then you blink and 90 seconds goes by and it's Drexel, three straight goals back on top. <laughs> Just completely shifts in the blink of an eye. McKenna, jump shot, another low save by Blumenthal. I think you've hit the nail on the head, Marcus. I mean, Blumenthal seeing everything low. Sparks transition. Oh. Shot just a little wide. Donnelly there for the backup. Now 13 saves for Ross Blumenthal. Yeah, Blumenthal. I wonder, you know, again, if, you know, scouting goalies is always, as a coach and a player, you know, you never want to speak too much about the goalie because it's, it's a mental thing as a shooter, right? But if you can see, right, watching a, a full game like this, you know, you would see that Blumenthal has pretty much saved every shot low. Donnelly has it saved in front. Loose ball picked up by Fairfield. Taking under five minutes to go. This is a big possession for the Stags. Ford going one on one for Max. He had Consoli. Instead, loose ball at midfield. Somehow that never crossed the midline, apparently, and ends up with George Grippo. Yeah, it looked like Fairfield had an advantage in the sub game there. Consoli was just blasting through the middle, going full speed, and those are. Those are tough passes to connect on, right? It's it seems easy cuz the guy is wide open, but that sub sub subbing midi is going full speed. Those are sometimes tough to connect and ends up in a turnover for Fairfield. Now Drexel going to take their time as they get their offensive midfielders on. Really spreading out this Stags defense with under 3:30 to play. They got a turnover. Here come the Stags. Extra pass down to the doorstep. Falling away. There's no backup. And Ford couldn't get it on frame. That's a killer. Not sure if that got deflected or just missed the cage, but unbelievable effort by Matt Rice. We've mentioned his name a couple times on the defensive end of the field, but Fairfield just not able to execute in transition. So we have a timeout here on the field, a four goal Drexel lead as we have just 
three minutes left to go. Drexel team looking to win their fourth straight. Meanwhile, for Fairfield, trying to bounce back after the loss to Towson. The good news for the Stags, they do have a win here in CAA play already. They beat Hofstra a couple of weeks ago, 12-11. to So coming into today, 1-1. One and one, But things don't get any easier. They've got a trip to Delaware, obviously one of the top teams in this conference, coming up next week for taking on Monmouth in a couple of weeks back here at Rafferty Stadium. So Stags, if they can't find a way back in this thing, looking at one and two and trying to climb their way back up into the standings. And Marcus, I mean, this conference added teams. You lost UMass, but you still added more teams than you lost. And so the battle for just four spots in the conference tournament even feistier this year than we've seen in years past. Yeah, no doubt. I was actually just trying to do a quick Google search on my phone to see if they expanded the playoff to six teams or not. But obviously, to your knowledge, Travis, no, that's, you... why they pay, that's why they pay you the big bucks. <laughs> um, yeah, absolutely. No, it's... Makes these games, every game is, is important, you know, to be able to play um, for obviously a, a berth of a CAA championship and then, you know, to make it to to the big big bracket in May. Uh, and you, you just look at Delaware last year. They they lost their first two games in conference play. They fell to 0-2. And, and so the rest of the regular season, they were playing for their postseason lives because yeah. they knew they lose one more. There's a chance that they're not playing in the playoffs. So that, that becomes what you start to look at when you lose a couple of games early in conference play. Yep, the pressure will mount. Fairfield gets the possession back as they bring it across the midline. Here comes Consoli, full head of steam. Another stop by Blumenthal. Right at his feet. Got Luka Kupski out there for Fairfield. He comes off now. Pass a little high for Consoli. By coming on the is Barisano who scoops up the ground ball, keeps the possession alive, just over two minutes to go here in regulation. Shot wide, back up for the Stags. Fairfield really doing, again, just they've dominated the middle of the field. You know, I think Drexel's failed now seven clears and a lot of turnovers for them going from D to offense and Fairfield just not able to get to that breaking point. I felt like if they were able to potentially tie the game, it might be a different story right now. But Drexel, give them credit. Three quick goals to keep the momentum, and their defenses held it down at this end of the field. Trying to squeeze that pass into Ford. Loose ball scooped up by Drexel. Charlie Maley, the LSM. A lot of space here in the middle. Drexel's going to do the smart thing. Yeah, I was, gonna... <laughs> <to go. laughs> I was about to say, someone's getting yelled at if uh, we're going to the goal here instead of killing off this, this shot clock and ending the game. And you know what? Credit A lot of credit to Drexel because this was a game that has that one stolen away. I'm not sure <laughs> what that pass was. Just when I'm trying to say some praises for the Dragons. Chance to go and transition the other way for the Stags as that one is eaten up before it got to Blumenthal. But Drexel very well could have felt the pressure of Fairfield. They get the stop at 12-11 to 11 when this game was pulled back within one. They get the stop. They go right down and they score. Ended up scoring three straight. And that, that's really where things shifted. Yep. And Fairfield, too, you know, McKenna with a hat trick, Bryce Ford with a hat trick, right? So your, your major player stepped up today. And I want to give a shout out, too, to Matt Rice. We've seen him all over the field. Wow. Another save by Blumenthal. Blumenthal. 
<laughs> he did not start well, but he is locked in. Now, 15 saves today. It's the fourth time in the last seven games he's had 15-plus stops. Yeah, he's absolutely dialed in. He's he's done a great job. He gets one high there, right? So saving them everywhere, high and low. Sorry, I should say fourth time in the last six games. I want to undersell what he's done. And that one doesn't even get to him. Rebound, and that will do it. Drexel wins their fourth straight. They're 3-0 in CAA play for the first time since 2013. The Dragons take it 15-11 to here in Fairfield. Big day for Luke Tomac on the offensive end for Drexel with four goals. Really stepping up and showcasing his his game. And then Blumenthal, just a stud. And just he got better, I felt like, as the game went on and just wasn't allowing Fairfield to crawl back in this game. That has been Blumenthal's calling card throughout his career. He gets better as the game goes along, and he certainly did that today. 15 saves to help backstop a four-goal win for the Dragons. You mentioned Tomac comes up with his fifth game with four-plus points this year, going off for five points. Semple and Donnelly with hat tricks as well as Drexel, Here's your winner, 15 to 11. Marcus, some final thoughts for us here today. Yeah, I mean, for again, you know, a, a big win for Drexel. They continue their winning streak now at four games and really just, you know, on both ends of the field getting it done. I think, you know, they'll look back at the film and I think they're going to work on their clear uh, next week of, of practice. And then if you're Fairfield, right, like I loved their effort and hustle all over the field. You know, they were down this entire game pretty much, but. They really, really scrap back. So credit to them. You know, Coach Baxter, it finally feels like it's his program now in his fourth year. And, um, you know, they're playing with that that grit, but just not able to get it done on their home turf today. Well, the Dragons do. They come on the road and they get the win. Once again, your final score, Drexel 15, Fairfield 11. That's going to do it for us here in our CAA Game of the Week. For Marcus Holman and our entire crew, I'm Travis Eldridge. We say so long from Fairfield, Connecticut. We'll see you next week as we have Drexel and Stony Brook squaring off on Saturday.